Not all symbiotes are born equal. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 strongest symbiotes. Human beings are disposable, but man and symbiote combined. This is a new race, a new species, a higher life form. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the strongest members of the Clintar, an alien race appearing in Marvel Comics and more commonly known as the Symbiotes. We're looking at the alien life forms themselves and not particular combinations like that time the Carnage Symbiote bonded with Dr. Octopus. Well, just another day in the life. Whoa! What the? Is that Rock? Number 10, Payback. In a race that comes in a massive array of shapes, sizes, and colors, this relative newcomer to the symbiote scene is unique. Very unique. Bonded to a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent named Mavis Trent, this symbiote causes its host to appear silver-skinned, a pretty far cry from the tentacles and teeth of most symbiotes. Furthermore, this symbiote grants its host powers including flight and electricity manipulation. It even draws powers from its host's sense of bliss and happiness rather than feeding off adrenaline. Are we sure this thing is part of the same race as Carnage and Venom? we're not seeing the resemblance. Number 9, Zeeks. The vast majority of the symbiotes that have appeared in Marvel Comics are the descendants of the Venom symbiote, but this one is an exception. A renegade shunned even by its own people, this particularly violent symbiote slowly kills its hosts by gradually devouring their brain. No wonder the alien race known as the Shi'ar consider it one of the most dangerous criminals in the galaxy. When the insane mutant known as Vulcan took over the Shi'ar Empire, however, he unleashed the symbiote and made it a member of his Imperial Guard. Some would call this playing with fire, but Vulcan was crazier than a bag of weasels after all. Number 8, Hybrid. In Venom's first solo adventure, he battled an organization known as the Life Foundation, which used his own symbiote offspring against him. The group of color-coded symbiotes, which included Scream, Riot, Agony, and Lasher, survived the encounter and eventually merged into this single entity. The newly formed symbiote was briefly bonded to a security guard, who helped the symbiotes battle their bloodthirsty brother, Carnage. This partnership didn't last, but they later found a new host in the merc with a mouth himself, Deadpool. For this unlikely partnership, each symbiote even controlled a different part of Deadpool's body. Now that's what we call teamwork. Number 7, Venom. The original symbiote, this iconic black creature began its comics career as Spider-Man's black suit, which he acquired during the Secret Wars. The symbiote eventually bonded with Eddie Brock and became the hulking, slobbering anti-hero we all know and love. He may not be the toughest or meanest symbiote on the block, but his incredible strength and agility mean he's more than a match for most of his fellow Clintar. His time with Spider-Man gave him all of the Web Slinger's powers, a trait that has been carried down to all of his many progenies, in addition to his natural shape-shifting abilities. What the hell are you? We are Venom. Number 6, Mayhem. In the alternate reality of Earth-982, Peter Parker has retired from his wall-crawling days, leaving his teenage daughter May, Mayday Parker, to take his place as the Amazing Spider-Woman. And just like her dear old dad, she has a symbiote in her rogues gallery. However, this symbiote is actually a clone of Mayday created by Norman Osborn. Her genetic code spliced with that of a symbiote. Because of this, she's in full control of her symbiote powers. She eventually turned to good, adopting the name April Parker and using her incredible strength and symbiote abilities as a member of Mayday's circle of allies, but eventually turned against May due to jealousy in what would end up being her final appearance. Number 5, Scorn. Symbiotes are all about growth and adaptation, with each new host or iteration further changing the nature of the alien organism. This symbiote is definitely proof of that, a unique member of the species that's part machine. After Carnage was taken into space and torn in half by Sentry, his remains were retrieved and experimented on, combining his biology with technology to try and create a new form of prosthetic limb. But you ever hear the saying about not messing around with terrifying space creatures? The Carnage symbiote obviously escaped, and in the process created an offspring in the prosthetic arm of Dr. Tannis Neves, who would become Scorn's host. Number 4, Anti-Venom. You gotta feel for poor Eddie Brock. He lost his job, his girlfriend left him, and he became the host of the Venom symbiote all in one week. Years later, Eddie was even diagnosed with cancer, prompting him to abandon the symbiote and sell it at an auction. Later still, Eddie's cancer was cured by Mr. Negative, but this proved to be a blessing in disguise when residual symbiote cells in Eddie's bloodstream reacted with Mr. Negative's powers, creating this powerful new symbiote. 
With all of Venom's powers, plus the ability to heal others, it prompted Eddie to return to the hero scene with a new focus on helping others. Number 3. Carnage It's no surprise that following his misadventures, Eddie Brock wound up in prison. Sharing his cell with a serial killer, Cletus Cassidy, Brock was convinced his days as Venom were done until the symbiote returned, attempting to free its former host and leaving behind a new symbiote. This new, more powerful entity bonded with Cassidy, creating a deadly new villain who went on a killing spree across New York. More powerful than his progenitor and pushed to new heights of bloodlust by its host, this new symbiote even prompted Spidey and Venom to team up just to defeat it before it could continue its bloody rampage. Number 2. Toxin The symbiote race grows more powerful with each generation, accumulating strength as they regenerate. This relatively new symbiote is perhaps the most powerful yet, being the 1000th generation. Spawned by Carnage, the new symbiote bonded to Pat Mulligan, a New York City cop who tried to rein in his new partner's bloodthirsty instincts and use its abilities for good. This was, unfortunately, easier said than done, especially given that Pat had to balance teaching the symbiote right from wrong with his duties as a cop and family man. Being the latest of its line, this new symbiote was more powerful than its forebears, even defeating Carnage and Venom. Number 1. Null While he may not technically be a symbiote himself, his status as the god of the symbiote race makes this ancient entity the literal be-all, end-all when it comes to the Clintar. Being older than the universe itself, this dark being waged war against the other ancient gods, including the powerful Celestials. To help him slay his fellow deities, he created a blade called the All Black and an army of symbiotic life forms. Eventually, he lost control over his creations, prompting them to rebel against their master and imprison him deep within an artificial world. Eventually, he managed to escape, because that's usually how it goes with ancient evil deities. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.